welcome, welcome, and a big welcome back to the channel. Hope that you're doing well. Hope you're feeling good. Hope that the sun has risen on you, finding you in a good day. Hope that the night is putting you down or good sleep, whatever it may be, wherever you are. Well, I guess I shouldn't wish you like a good sleep, not just yet, not for the next few minutes. While we listen to Jean-Luc Ponty, we're gonna move on into the next few tracks here uh, on Enigmatic Ocean, of course, released 1977. We're going to listen to Enigmatic Ocean parts one through, what is it, four over here, which is going to make up the title track. It doesn't really make sense in my mind to split these up, to be honest. I haven't really looked at the comments and to see if like everyone's recommended them all together, but it just makes sense to listen to this all together. Put it all in one nice sandwich and we'll take a hearty bite of this, um, this piece of the album because the album has been fantastic uh, up till now. So I'm excited to continue on with it. I hope that you guys are as well. Let's just go ahead and dive into it. I'm more than likely not going to stop each part. I'm probably just going to let them all run together. Uh, so let's go ahead and do that, starting now. <laughs> exciting start that's part one we're moving into part two now but what an exciting start there This foot race between John 
and Alan tearing up the track. They're all taking their rounds. They're all going around. I know that Steve is tired. I lied to you. I do want to stop it because I need to talk really quick. Listen, if I don't talk, I'm going to forget things. I just wanted to catch the transition so at least we know kind of where it's going to go back to. We'll back up as we continue on. Um, okay, so part one begins cosmic -y. You know, it begins like spacey. I love that. The soft breathing, the inhaling, the exhale of the synths in the beginning, right? Everything sounds great. And then we get into this beautifully, beautifully cosmic explosion, creating nebulas in the sky and the space. It's a wonderfully melodic setup. It's a great precursor to what's going to come, right? And I can already tell you, listening to the first two parts and getting into the third, we're gonna be exploring different facets, right? The first one began atmospheric, and then we got into this Gloria, not Gloria, <laughs> glorious, like, explosion in the sky of this, like, like I said, great prelude to what's gonna come. But, part two. Part two, I don't know what happened. They turned the air conditioner off. They ran out of studio time. They said, listen, we got a little bit less than four minutes to put something down. Let's put it down and put it down. They did so hard that there's cracks in the floor. Jeez, like they're on fire here. This is like Noonwood Race from Mahavishnu, right? This is like one of those fiery tracks where everyone is lined up at the track meet and the gun goes off and they're just blazing towards the finish line. The drumming here, I know that it was just exhaustive. I know <laughs> that Steve Smith on the drums it is just pulling that rhythm like a bridle on a horse. Like he's just racing, right? And the bass line, bass line by Ralph Armstrong. He is hitting it with speed, no doubt, right? The intensity and the speed. But if you're listening to that bass line, do you hear still how funky it is? Do you hear how groovy it is? has that hot intensity, but at the same time, he's still holding onto that strong, strong groove, which is just incredible. It's a fun bass line to listen to. And more than that, it's a fun bass line for the rest of the band to go off on because Jean, Alan, Daryl, and Alan, they, oh, Alan twice, <laughs> they all go off, they have their solos, they have their moments where one pulls ahead, then the next pulls ahead, then the next pulls ahead. Like I said, it's this fierce competition. It feels like a track meet. And they're all just like having their moment to shine and shine. They do incredibly. Uh, Jean-Luc, I mean, it's already hard for me to comprehend in my mind, you know, soloing on a violin with such intensity and such bravado. And yet here we have it in spades as he works himself up and down the violin fretboard. It is incredible what he's doing. Of course, the guitarist doing the same thing. I was very impressed with Zavad on the, on the uh, synth solo there. I really like the sounds that are being developed in here because they all work together in its nice cohesive manner while at the same time bringing something different to the table. 
but I just have to say that the air conditioner was off for the for, for the second part because that was just intense. That, that was that go off moment. So I'm going to back it up just a second here uh, to the end of part two, just like right about here or so, just the last five seconds, uh, just so we can once again get ourselves into the mentality of part two as we transition to part three. Let's continue on. But I had to talk. I had to talk. And I know that was loud. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Not sorry. Puppy down the street. Final part, part four. Let's let it, let's let it ride. Bring it right back. Right back to the beginning. Right on back to the beginning.
double bass. That was an incredible suite of music. That was incredibly, incredibly beautiful, exciting, funky, adventurous. It takes you to all the places that you want to go. And if there was one place that you didn't want to go, there was some moment within those four parts that you probably enjoyed more than the others. But as a whole, this was incredible to listen to. So first of all, that transition off of the hot part two, as we move into part three, it comes off with this very, very funky sidestep on the shuffle. I love the drum pattern there. And of course the bass once again, just, just taking us to another level. And then we get that hot guitar solo, which I would imagine is probably gonna be Holdsworth on that one, but it could be Strumer. I, I'm not sure who's doing it. I don't have a visual, I'm just listening. So can't quite tell you, but either way, what a great solo. Then Jean-Luc comes in as well, picks up the pieces that were left and puts some more pieces down. <laughs> and then for just a bit of a moment, for just the last 40 seconds of the tracker, so we come off of that mid-paced, funky suburban and we get into the urban we get into the hot once again it's like oh i forgot my wallet in the studio well let's hop back in there so so they rush to the end and i just really like that transition because it is a stark transition it is a, a very urgent one but the urgency is delivered and handled so well i like how they step back into that moment like a like a little bit of a brief reprise i guess you could say from part two and then we really move on to a deep reprise of part four which technically calls back to everything from part one just once again, putting it all back down, taking those pieces that were rearranged during two and three and putting it back to where it was in part one. And yet something has changed. And yet we are left with this new feeling, this adventure that we just took place on. It's like when you, you know, you work all day, right? You work your eight to five or whatever. You go home, you go on vacation for a week, somewhere totally different. You're in a different world. And then at the end of vacation, you come on back and you're back in your seat at eight to five. And yeah, there's a little bit of a mundane uh, feeling to that but you're changed because you came back from vacation. You're back in the same spot, but you have a different feeling. That is what Enigmatic Ocean feels like to me. Going on vacation from the norm, from your eight to five. Um, yeah, that's all I gotta say. <laughs> that's it, that's it. Awkward ending, but that's it. Let me know what your thoughts are in the comments down below. Did you have a favorite part out of this whole thing? Um, I, I didn't really have a favorite, did I? I didn't really have a favorite part because it all just kind of works together. I don't, I'm not going to separate it in my mind. No, I'm not going to do that. I liked it all. So you can let me know your thoughts in the <laughs> comments down below. You can, of course, follow me on Twitter if you're interested. You can support what I do on the channel. Little two dollars a month over on Patreon. Just press the like button. You can just press the like button. Hope you enjoyed this. Hope you enjoy the rest of your day. And I hope that you come on back tomorrow as well. Bye, guys.